Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day on this holiday weekend to watch this video. In today's video, we're going to talk about virtualization on Linux. That's right. We're going to take a look at that because I see people talking about VirtualBox all the time, but hardly anybody talks about Vert Manager or more specifically QEMU slash KVM. So before we do that, though, please, uh, Hit the thumbs up, the subscribe button, and the notification button so that way you get notified of every new video that we put out on this channel. That's right. So what do I want to tell you about QEMU slash KVM, or sometimes commonly known as Vert Manager? Well, it's kind of a heated debate between which one is the best virtualization manager for Linux, because a lot of people you'll see, like um, you, there's actually three common ones. There's QEMU KVM, then there's VirtualBox, and then you've got GNOME boxes. GNOME boxes is based off of KVM and QEMU as well. It's just got a different front end and it's put together by GNOME where there's vert manager which is actually a front end for libvert which is a syst is a bunch of tools that are given to use with qemu slash kvm and then VirtualBox, of course everybody knows that it's its own gui it's got its own virtualization uh within itself um to do the same things that you get with lib with virtual manager in virtual box you have to use it's own it's built into its own app as one and you have to do the guest add-ons feature to do a lot of the tools that we do so let's kick things off by delving into the raw power that's unleashed when you actually use the qemu kvm this dynamic duo which is like a super dream team uh for power users and for developers um is sh like qemu is short for quick emulator and KVM is a short term for kernel based virtualization machine, right? So with QEMU, you could use different architectures with it. You could use x86, ARM, PPC, and Spark. Where with the KVM, which is important because it kind of adds an added bonus onto QEMU, it lets you take advantage of your system's hardware. Uh, like your CPUs pass through, your GPUs pass through. It's near native when it does it. You're not just limited with a handful of pre-configured virtualization hardware devices like you are in VirtualBox. In the QEMU KVM, you have the complete control over the virtual hardware, allowing you to actually fine tune every aspect to meet your specific needs. So you can actually fine tune network devices to storage controllers and even USB pass throughs. The possibilities are endless in this level of flexibility it empowers you to actually truly customize your virtual machine so let's go ahead and pop over and take a look at what the virtual manager which is a front which is the gui part of libvirt deed is and how it allows you to actually customize every aspect of your virtual machine so here I have my virtual machine open on my desktop. And as you can see, this is what you open up when you type in vert manager. This is what you get. And in here you have file, which is at a connection or a new virtual machine. By connection, it is actually a connection to your host kernel. Then of course you could edit connection deep preferences and uh, view and of course help. Now let's open up. I have an Arch Linux one here. We're going to open it up. When you open it up, this is what it does. It opens into a whole new window. And when you open into this whole new window, what happens is, so you can actually close this out and it will not affect your virtual machine. So I'm gonna hit close here. And now you just have the one window, which is basically, let's, let's picture it as a container that's running your virtual machine. It's literally the virtual machine. So now you can go under here. This will show you the graphical console when you run it. So when you hit play, it starts to spin up. Oh, aha, hang on one second. I got to start my network connection because of it being a safe thing. Uh, it doesn't, it, you can set it up to where it automatically enables your network 
to be active your virtual network to be active but i do not like it that way hang on one second let me start that so to do that you just want to open up your terminal so you type sudo versh net dash start uh type that right s t a r t default and you hit enter and then you type in the password and it starts it oh it's already active because I've, I've started it so but that's the command you want to give it it's simply that sudo verse net start default that's what you want to do to start your network if you don't have system d already enable it for you when you start the actual virtual machine so now to look in the virtual machine as you see here like if i click here you have the virtual manager which i showed you how to close it right but now you actually can click on this info here and this will show you all the different components of your virtual machine just as if it was an actual machine on your operating system and so with this here you can select any of these things and make changes like let's go to your cd-rom right here you can actually load right here by browsing in your local directory whatever hard drives you have available that are virtualized already which is your arch linux and i have nix os unstable and then you actually have other places that you can download from to get you know like any isos that you might have downloaded or whatever right now uh, Let's close out of this now uh say you want to um uh adjust your display server you can search you can do it right here you can do a spice server or you can do a vnc server wh whatever you want to do uh your video card you can change the video type of emulation that you have from from books to qxl rm vga virtual virtual is what you normally want to run in i mean you can do usb pass you can do everything you want through here that is the amount of flex flexibility that you have for which you can actually customize this virtual machine you have far more control over this than you do with virtual box even with guest add-ons so that is really what we're talking about and the difference between kvm with libvirt dm virtual manager versus your standard virtual box and even gnome boxes because gnome boxes does not give you that amount of control over your virtual machine also with libvirt uh, installed and uh, it gives you kind of like the swiss army knife of virtualization for real i mean there isn't anything that you can't do with it if you're a system administrator or developer to use it to your to tailor it to your actual needs whatever it is that you're doing um you have the vert manager and then you also have cockpit that is quite available that is available uh, in the repos as well that allows you to customize it almost to the degree of vert manager so another thing we want to talk about is the actual you know with vert manager also you get a lot of support i mean you get a lot with VirtualBox as well there's a robust community for support for them as well but with kvm qem you you have you know you have irc channels you have forums you have documentation guides as well and it doesn't it's pretty agnostic to whether you're an advanced user or a new beginner user because you will actually find documentation to help you set it up i'm um, considering doing a video on it if you guys want to like comment down below let me know if you guys want me to show you how to set it up how to use it that kind of stuff also if you guys have used kvm and Q, uh, qemu in either cockpit or with libvirt or you know in virtual manager let me know that as well i mean that is an interesting aspect to know as well because i and what reasons you used it i use it a lot for like doing distro reviews that kind of stuff so uh what other reasons do you have to use you know virtual machine that that's that'd be interesting to know as well so if you're a VirtualBox fan, also let me know why you think VirtualBox is way better than Vert Manager with K K QEMU and KVM installed as well, because I'd like to hear that aspect. I tried VirtualBox a long time ago, and I just didn't like the limitations that I had. Uh, one of the things that really turned me on was the actual, you know, the native near native speeds for file sharing, because KVM uses the 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 file sharing that is near native as well um it also gets all of the 
bleeding edge up now i wouldn't say updates but the features okay the bleeding edge features that are baked right into the kernel because once again it literally is a kernel virtualization manager so it uses components of the kernel it's far better so that's another aspect where qemu kvm wins again so yeah just let me know about those things as well and what appeals to you i'll tell you guys to keep doing what you do keep on links and stay blessed stay happy and above all I'll catch you in the very next one. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Jonathan, AKA Sprungles for being an admin on Discord. Uh, all the admins that are over there, Danny, as well as Yoris. Also like to thank Jonathan for being the moderator in our chat when we're live and also our editor, on the TLT and also Nate Pick who helps out from time to time with editing duties as well. Thanks guys for all that you guys do for making the TLT community great. And these guys that you're watching right now for supporting the channel.